Like, we. Uh, um, I couldn't think of just one woman to honor, many women of all which I've had the pleasure to meet about five and a half years ago. At New Life helped me and still helped me to be the woman that I know now. Before I was invited to come by Alicia and Lee, I didn't really know what I was. In secret, I was honestly depressed and looking to be filled by a man and seeking for whatever kind of affection I could get from family and my mother. But because of these women, Amika, Alicia, Rhonda, John, Debbie, and Yvette, I've truly become a better woman in person. Uh, I'm just going to read. <laughs> okay, y'all didn't really whoop me up right now. <laughs> um, I chose Yvette because she opened up my passion, stuff I wouldn't say to children that I knew just for myself and what I experienced, I never wanted another child to feel that. I came to her probably a year before she uh, came to me and asked about doing the children's ministry. And it was on my heart before she even asked me. And then she came up to me and Alicia and asked me what I did the children's ministry. And I said, yeah. And then I went home that night and literally bawled like a baby because I just <laughs> couldn't believe then I thank God, and then I also prayed for guidance so that I wouldn't direct them the wrong direction. Uh, I picked her also, I call her Kimar Auntie, because her and Tommy got a thing with him. He'd just sit down and listen, won't even move, which I love. <laughs> uh, oh, goodness gracious. I picked Amika, because she's always been more than just a pastor. She took me in when I didn't have anywhere else to go. Oh, goodness gracious. Y'all, I'm glad it's all girls down here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Reggie. I'm sorry. <laughs> she took me in when I didn't have room for us to go. Even with a child like Keymore <laughs> terrorizing her house, even when I know it bothered her, she never really showed it. She just flushed her little blonde hair, <laughs> at me, grinned at me. And even opened me up. I'm not the greatest singer, but I'm glad to go do praise and worship oh, nice. because wow. I'm praising and worship. And she shows me that when I go up there, just to remember that's the reason you do it. It's not about what you sound like, what everybody else thinks because of who you're praising. Exactly. And I truly consider Amika like a mom to me, even though she's got kids. And I'm, you know, really too old for her to have kids. <laughs> I'm glad she justified that. <laughs> but, but I. She's just, I mean, I know a lot of people, even me before I came to the church, think of pastors, this, this, and that. She is so far past what a pastor is to me. And then because of the family that I did come from, I chose Debbie. This is going to sound so weird. But people used to, when I first aired, I was calling her Mama K. And I came up with this thing, and I said, oh, yeah, she is like everybody's mama. And I always say, I'm the toasted child. I chose you. <laughs> you know. I, I got a nice little, nice camp. Yeah. So, uh, I chose you because. I never thought of that one. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. Because watching you with your daughters with just different stuff, and a lot of it just Carolyn told me from when I used to talk to her like every day. I admire you because I honestly did not think that any woman could have the compassion in the family that you do. Not that everything's glossy and you haven't went through anything, but the fact that through all that, all you guys individually have done together as a family, I did not know a family could be like that. And I admire that. And at the same time, me not being family, I pop up at your house whenever, all the time you join me in like I am. Okay. I chose John. I'm going to I'm trying not to fall y'all. Uh, I chose John because a lot of people don't know there are many times we've had conversations about men, family, that nobody else has known as many times. I've just been sitting upstairs in the altar and nobody else has been here. And John has just come up and she out of nowhere. I don't even know who it is. And then I'll hear her and she's right there praying with me through whatever my situation is, even when I'm on the phone girl, she can text me and I could be going through something right then and there or being in a bad state of mind and she'll just text me and be like, hey, love you girl or something and I'll be, it's just like, you know, 
I don't think anything else. When it comes, it sounds crazy, but when it comes up for a while, I, I just honestly just just got to a point where I didn't feel like I had to have a man, and I haven't dated since Kimar even came about, but the mindset was still there. Personal stories, not just oh you don't have to have one. A lot it's easier said than done. Just being personal, and at the same time, no matter what, she's always put God first. She's always let it know no matter what our situation is, even when we feel like we want to ignore God because we're angry. She's always put him first and showed me that that carries me through. Alicia, because even though like now she's married and I hardly get to see her near as much, I met her. Like right after I think I met her, I met her at Walmart and then like a little after that I met I met Danny. And we like had some stories and stuff. And you know what? Go, but this Danny, was her. Oh, why? <laughs> she did and not I, just. And I used to joke to Alicia about it all the time. <laughs> and it was kind of a joke. Uh, I, Danny, I, Danny was already supposed to work, but that was kind of how me and Lisa started joking. And then that's when we started dating. Lee. And oh, I met her because Alicia like kind of got me into not thinking like the world thinks. <laughs> and she didn't just invite me to church, she'd invite me friends that here come over here, meet this person. She kinda got me in to what all the people that I call family and she started that. And last, yes. Rhonda. Don't get me for saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> She went through so much. And before I came here, I was complaining about what my family is like and what they've done and being molested and raped and all this different stuff. And I was playing the blame game. And even though she went through all that she went through and it's hard for her, she tells me stories and things. And she's always for me, even when I'm wrong, she would make sure to let me know. <laughs> One thing she says to me, this was probably two or two or two or three years ago, she goes, I'm gonna call you my special needs daughter. That's important. That, was special. <laughs> that was the important part. She said special. And I even I remember when she first said that to me and I thought about it, because I kinda said, No, I feel bad because I felt like I was putting my burdens on her and she had enough, but no matter what, she opened up anyway. And even when neither one of us are doing great. Like the bar I never had. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>